Good morning, Facebook. Uh, excited to be live here with you in Ottawa. I'm Charles Boyer, Senior Manager here with the Conference Board of Canada, joined by uh, Dr. Bill Howitt, uh, our Chief of Research. So nice to be here. This is the first time we've done this too, Charles, so I'm looking forward to the conversation. <laughs> yes, uh, me too, uh, for sure. And uh, really the conversation today is, is uh, geared around the Let's Talk Day is uh, next week, and we really want to jump into the conversation. The theme this year every um, action counts and so we just wanted to I want to ask you a few really a few questions uh, Bill in, in advance of that and okay. um, uh, and just to really get you know start the momentum as we as we get moved towards uh, next week Is that all right with you super right super I, I showed up so that's probably a good start <laughs> awesome right on uh, and uh, of course if you have questions uh, from our, our live audience uh, just write them in and I'd be um, happy if we have time to ask on on your behalf um, Bill, you're a leading expert here in Canada on workplace uh, mental health, but uh, I've worked with you for a number of years and I know how passionate you are mm -hmm. about mental health. Uh, I just wanted, uh, for our audience who may not have met you yet, just so you can impart your your, your passion on them. Yeah, thanks Charles. I think uh, for me personally, I think it's most of us get into these kind of things because they have some type of story that, that resonates, whether it's a personal story or a friend or something that illuminates the passion around mental health. And my, my background in it is I'm someone who spent the last 30 years focusing on supporting people with mental health issues, clinically, teaching, and, and involved. So I've had a passion, but the root cause of all of this is my background as a kid who grew up with a mental health issue, lived my entire life with a mental health issue. I'm kind of like a walking accommodation on this. I talk about it, but one of the things that I actually, when I was, you asked me the question earlier, that got me thinking about this to tell why I'm really passionate about this so much, more is here's the truth. I'm a 6'2", fairly big white Anglo-Saxon male with all kinds of privileges, all kinds of education, all kinds of stuff. And I can tell people that I have a mental health issue and I can be comfortable and open and tell them. And I'm in 2020, I'm still not convinced when you tell someone that this is who I am, I live with a mental illness, what does that mean for them? And I think that we're just starting the conversation on removing stigma However, the concept around expectations for what my expectations are for myself and for you in that interaction, because telling you, what do I expect you to do? And I think the next evolution is to realize that I, I still am pretty highly functioning. I still go to work every day. I can still drive myself every day, but I still struggle with a mental health issue. And I still have challenges that some other people may not have. And it's hard sometimes, even being someone with an academic background and clinical, to figure out how to articulate. So that's my next, mm. I think the next 10 years of my life is I think we're getting it out of the box. Mm. We're talking about it. Yeah. But now how do we help each other to really get to the next level where we can actually feel authentic and feel mm. safe and know because I still believe there's stigma, but there's still maybe a different type of stigma. It's maybe more, ooh, mm. I have to create the illusion that I'm okay with it. Mm -hmm. but maybe I don't really actually understand what I'm agreeing to support. Mm -hmm. I like I like to pick up on that because uh, I know I've seen you speak a number of times and I know you go in and speak with large audiences and one of the some of the feedback we get from folks is is how you're able to connect on on a, and make this um, uh, people understand that mm -hmm. and, and uh, make, can you speak a little bit about how when you approach these and and bringing people into the conversation, you do a really good job of that. Are you, are you talking about the mental health piece with psychological safety and how those pieces are connected specifically? Yeah, I was going to get to that. I just wanted to, that connection that you make with people, I, I think is really special. I just wanted to. Well, I, I, I think the big one for me, I think, is, is realizing that we, we will probably jump around a bit, but in my head, I think about mental health is, is you'll start seeing people like myself, I'll start moving more towards the employee experience. Mm. And I'll start realizing that when we, when the conversation around mental health started, Charles, I think a lot of people jump to mental illness. Mm. And I think what happened was the support people in the place, in the workplace with a mental illness. So accommodations, return to work, disability management, EAP, paramedical that was kind of in to make sure they have drug plan support mm. and then what happened is is that was what the people thought that was a strategy and I'm really trying to get people to realize no 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 like it's not just mental illness it's every one of us have a mental health like mm -hmm. the reality is mental health is very much like your physical health mm -hmm. it can fall from a scale from low to high and it can move back and forth but what, what, what I'm starting to see is is that in the workplace 
very much like inclusion. What is in mental health? Like every experience yeah. I have as an employee can either be perceived by me as being a positive or a negative. And so the, and, and the reality is what's my role in my own mental health, mm -hmm. right? So it's trying to get people, I think, Charles, as we start to unpack today and, and all out of concept is that I believe a lot of it started out with just focusing on mental illness. Yes. And I think we're starting to realize that's why you're seeing big trends on resiliency and mental fitness. And now we need to start preparing, looking at cultures and teams, et cetera. And then with the release of the playbook from Cam H or not Cam, yeah, Cam H, yes. Um, both they're giving guidance around things to do, which excites me that I, I want to make a couple points on it's very aligned with our thinking as we go through this conversation. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And then can you also talk um, about, uh, you know, I, I agree the employee experience throughout the entire employee life mm -hmm. cycle, the moments that matter. And yeah. Something we're really focused in on and, and in the safety community, really grabbing hold of, of psychological safety as well. I, I, you know, I, in protecting psychological harms, like that seems to be a real uh, words that are really coming out. Do you want to speak a little bit sure. about what we're seeing? Sure. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting going back to what we just said a second ago It's interesting. And we started out really focusing on, you know, mental illness became a big focus, right? You know, and Bell Let's Talk has done some wonderful job about helping people with depression, anxiety, addiction, et cetera. And then what I'm starting to notice when even the CSA, the Canadian Standard, the Mental Health Commission came out with a standard, lots of folks took to it and people are starting to realize and learn more and we're still, still a long ways away mm -hmm. from, you know, everybody buying in. However, here's what the cool thing is that I've noticed is that we were focusing on mental illness. Then we started to move to mental health. Now we're starting to think about psychological safety mm -hmm. and psychological safety. There is a concept that if you ask the average person, what's psychological safety right now? And you go, well, what, how do you define it? And psychological safety to me, and I, I try to be very simplistic in it is for every employee comes to work and feels welcome and feels safe. And, they, and that's the key. They yeah. feel welcome and they feel safe. But what's interesting is the standard talked about and still it still does. I mean, I do work with CSA as well. I'm chairing a couple of things of uh, the, uh, the, the uh, substance impairment now is the biggest thing is to reduce mental injuries and to promote mental health. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting. We're starting now to get caught up to the whole continuum. Now there's mental illness. We're going to support in the workplace. Mm -hmm. People give them accommodations and, and figure out how to do return to work and disability management mm -hmm. and paramedical. You'll start seeing more providers like they'll start to get $5,000, $10,000 towards paramedic. Yeah. Now you're, then you start seeing mental health movement. More people are focused on mental health, resiliency training, employee experience, manager employee relationship, training managers in mental health. And with occupational health and safety changes, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Now psychological safety is becoming more important. And under that, it would be workplace violence, domestic violence in the workplace, harassment, incivility, those types of things. Mm -hmm. But here's where, where the challenge is for lots of folks is getting the time and capacity to know where to start or the resources to know how to actually measure impact, which I'm sure we'll talk more about. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, we talked about the silos a little bit too, mm -hmm. is this uh, OHS, uh, mental health, mental illness. And then also we talked about uh, inclusion and belonging, yes. the evolution of that. And I, I think that will be a big key as we move forward. And there'll be more conversation of bringing that Do you. Is it an inclusion piece or is this all working together? Right? Uh, Charles, I think you're spot on. I think it's a great question because if you start to think about inclusion, for example, you know, I'm putting my old CHRO hat on when I stuff I used to do back in the old days. And that when I started to work in the world of in HR, I, I kind of think to myself, go, hey, is there really a particular individual program that an organization should have inclusion? It's just a strategy or should inclusion be everywhere? And to me, it should be everywhere. It should be in everything you're doing from your onboarding to your selection to mm -hmm. your your everyday conversations being awareness and accepting differences and being open to conversations and being aware of your own implicit bias and learning and learning and learning and learning how to fix relationships and resolve conflict in the workplace which we haven't really taught people how to do mm -hmm. now we come to this mental health piece i'm i know people are talking about uh mental health strategies i agree that we need to have a long-term strategy where I might be the little, the person that may, may be a little bit odd in this conversation is that, that I actually don't do mental health strategies now. 
I do employee experience strategy. I'm worried, I wake up in the morning, I think about what's everything the employer can do today that can possibly support the employee experience that will impact their mental health because human beings aren't machines. Mm. And when we feel good, we thrive. Mm. And then also creating that conversation, what can the employee do to impact their experience? So I kind of see it like a battery, Charles, really simple. Yep. The employer can do things that can charge the battery or drain the battery. Employees can learn to do things that can charge the battery or yeah. drain the battery. That joint responsibility. Joint right? response, exactly. That two-way accountability. We can, if we can really get that into the DNA, mm. then it doesn't have to be a super complicated. Then maybe it's not even a strategy. Maybe it's a way of life, and then it becomes our just cause. Mm. It becomes how we want to look at human beings, and then that tells us there is no check the box. Mm. It's every day, and I think there's a lot of lessons when you talked about OHS and HR. OHS, one of the great things they do really, really good is when they start to look at non-compliance. When there's non-compliance or non-conformity, it's not just placing blame, but seeking to understand what was the root cause of that and mm. how can we actually resolve it and reduce the risk for that in the future. Mm. My sense is HR and OHS, you're starting to see that there's, there's going to be a blending because we start to get into auditing. For example, going back to the playbook just for a minute mm. from Cam H, what I was excited about their number one recommendation talked about having a long-term mental health strategy. But underneath that, it infers that one of the things that would be super successful for people to have every organization leader on their corporate scorecard to have a mental health index, score of mental health. Hmm. Not long-term disability, the number of people who went on LTD. Important metrics, yes. Short-term disability, all due to mental health, yes. Hmm. Important metrics, yes. Return to work, important metrics, mm -hmm. yes. Recidivism, yes. EAP, return, yes. But to me, instead of your 15, 20%, I'd like to know the 100% and know what their mental health is. Mm -hmm. And then start noticing the interaction between people's mental health, their experience in regards to their wellness, mm -hmm. their productivity, their joy in their workplace, and their risk profile. Because I think people with lower mental health and lower scores you're going to have more accidents mm. from stachomas and people being distracted. Mm -hmm. You're going to have more harassment, more incivility. You're going to have more attendance. Instead of just trying to correct those things, because those are cost drivers, mm -hmm. get upstream and start anticipating that every human being wants to feel accepted. Every human being wants to feel autonomy. Every human being wants to feel engaged and help them do that. Mm -hmm. And that starts, that, we'll talk about that, but that starts mm -hmm. with some intention. Yeah. Absolutely. Just want to switch gears uh, for a little bit and, and, and help um, some, uh, you know, employees, organizations, mental health leaders out there to prepare for Bell Let's Talk Day mm -hmm. and get your thoughts on how each one of them should should prepare. Starting with employees, um, you what are some, maybe your top things you would say to an employee as they approach um, Bell Let's Talk Day? You know, it's, you and I were talking about this, and we, we and, I, and, I, and I appreciate your thoughts on it too. So I'm going to share a couple of mine. Is I think it's a day of reflection, really. I think, like, I live with a mental illness. I know what it's like. I feel comfortable enough that I can talk about it. My ADHD is my biggest asset I have. It also can be my biggest liability. So what will happen is that I have a gift, and I sometimes can do, so I go back and forth. The people who care and love me accept that. So I can do some things that are really cool, and I can do some things that people go, oh. And so what I'm trying, it's a time where we could, if I think individually, is if you have a mental health issue, I don't feel we should feel pressure that go, I have to raise my hand and start advocating and start stalking. I think it's, it's just to be aware where you are in your journey for your mental health and to be mindful that not everybody may, if you have great mental health today and see the world, is if we could actually be just a little bit more tolerant and a little less judgmental for other human beings is because I can tell you when it's hard, it's hard. And, and it's easy to say to the Dr. Robbie is say, oh, just go do this or go do that. But when you feel you have an anchor and you don't understand what it is and you can listen to yourself consciously, have rational thoughts, but you're caught in emotion, mm. it's a complex place to be. So a little bit more empathy if you were doing really good, mm. you know, be open to support other people. If you don't know anything about mental health, mental illness, make a commitment to say, I'm going to learn something. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. And if you are living with a mental health 
you know, who your support systems, because we know that having authentic connections and support systems is critical for people with mental health issues. And what is your mental health plan? I believe every organization in Canada, this is my thing, should be, and I use the word should, that's modal operator necessity, really, really strong, is take like a hundred bucks, not very much, and help every one of their employees develop a mental fitness strategy, no, a mental fitness plan. Have a just cause that every employee understands. Mm -hmm. If you go to the average employee, they don't know how to develop a mental fitness mm -hmm. plan. Mm -hmm. Give them the tools because we need to educate people that there's things we can do. Mm -hmm. Probably a little bit long-winded. So no worries. So <laughs> you covered the employee, and that would be a recommendation yeah. for an organization. Yeah. You covered that too. No, or would you? No, I think organize it. Here, 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 bell less talk is like Christmas to me. Everyone's on their best behavior. So everyone, if you say to all the senior people, mental health is important. That's going to be the one day they're all going to say yes. Everyone's going to walk a little bit happier, and everyone's going to be a little bit more open. Here's what we really, I really hope: employers and CEOs and senior people look at themselves in the mirror and say. Yeah, and Bill, let's talk day. I'm motivated. I'm really, really. How about April 24th? Or is that the same level of attention? Am I dialed in? We need our senior leaders to realize this human beings come in every day. And 20% are coming in with mental health issues. 30% are coming in with loneliness. 60% are coming in with financial issues. There's divorce, is 50% of people doing. You know, we're dealing with comorbidity. Lots of human beings are coming to work every day with issues. And the more we can support them, well, if, we, if it's true human beings are our most valuable resource, mm -hmm. human beings then are a finite capacity. If their battery's not drained and they don't know how to fix it and deal with all the demands, they're gonna be in trouble. So my guess my coaching is make senior leaders step back and reflect Will they behave with the same intention every other day other than Bella Stocks? Thank you. And the, the last one would be the mental health advocates and wellness leaders uh, across the country. What would be kind of one um, thing you'd, you'd want them to be thinking about? And Self-care. I think we talk about that, and, I, and I'll take your coaching on that. And I, I agree with you. I think it's a really – we have lots of people that are trying to help other people. The most valuable thing a manager can do or a person helping other people is help themselves first. You know, you, you, it's kind of like when you're in the airplane, put the mask on first mm. before you help someone else. I believe to be congruent, if you can take care of your own mental health, be a role model, physical, mental, take care of those things, that will inspire other people to believe. Because people are going to watch. They're going to listen mm. to your words, but they're going to watch what you actually do. Mm -hmm. We don't have to be perfect. We just have to be aware of what we're doing. Awesome. Great, Coach. Thank, thank you. And just uh, the final question is, um, beyond Bell Let's Talk Day, you know, you, you mentioned it's Christmas, it's, it's a great day, it gr brings a lot of attention towards mental health, but how can an organization, uh, what would be your coaching to sustain that momentum um, the rest of the year? Yeah, I think to, it's, it's to step back and realize there's a lot of different programs and policies, just freeze for a minute, and just take two or three things and do them really, really well. So for example, one, Get your senior leadership on board, train them, make sure all your managers have training so they actually know how they can support people, not just with mental illness, but very much like the Aristotle Project talks about in the Google Project. Psychological safety is create the conditions where employees are allowed to share their opinion without mm -hmm. having fear. Mm -hmm. Like it's kind of like if I say in a meeting, I have an idea and you're my senior leader and you're managing, but that's a stupid idea. Mm -hmm. So. Psychological, yeah, no, but psychological safety is encouraging people to be vulnerable so they can share and bring their best. With AI and everything that's going with this future job, the most important thing for human beings in a new job market will be having that ability for their ability to have creativity. And if we don't allow them that abundance to think without fear, mm. it's just going to be Dax bilateral brain syndrome theory. Sorry, we're just going to have that's we're going to shut down the creativity and we're going to have people in fear. We got to. We have to think about that. So the leadership is one. Mm. And the other two I'll say really, really quickly is one, give the opportunity for every employee to measure their mental health by a, doesn't have to, not a psychometric tool. We don't want that. And I don't want to measure depression, anxiety, that. Measure about their resiliency, their experience in the workplace and their programs. How resilient are they doing? What the programs are they doing? Figure out different profiles if things are working. And that would be your index score. And the last thing I would say 
is if you have any programs or support programs, take an inventory of what they are and ensure they're working, not just attendance, check the box. Find out, so evidence, get evidence to make sure things working. Awesome. Bill, thank you so much for your insights. Uh, for our live audience, it was great spending 20 minutes uh, with you're all good. of you. And you're good at this. <laughs> and we had a lot of fun. Uh, I really look forward to seeing everybody uh, soon. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you.